You're listening to the smartest guys in marketing, the best show on the planet for client businesses to learn about traffic, funnels, sales, conversions, and marketing coolness. Chris and Taylor are the founders of Traffic and Funnels, a digital marketing consultancy helping you get paid clients from cold traffic daily. Now, here are your hosts, Chris and Taylor. What's up, yo, boys and girls, children? <laughs> this is a, that's a I good one. That's the greatest it. intro. Every time that I get to do the intro, I just love, I like being really memorable. Yeah. Uh, we got, we got smartest guys in marketing here with a fantastic episode about vetting the people you work with, how to get third party opinions. Here's the deal, dude. I think that there is most, this is actually in the Bible. There is wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Mm. You ever read that one? That was... I heard about it. Mm. I think I saw the movie one time. It's a pretty, it's, it's a, it's a popular, it's a popular verse. But then there's also the Napoleonic quote: "Better one bad general than two good ones." And what he's saying is basically making sure that you're not listening to too many voices, and how, and being kind of strung around by too many opinions. And so today, I think what, what we're going to talk about is just how to properly vet and make sure that the people you are listening to actually know what they're talking about. And uh, we have a couple stories to share with you. Embarrassing, humiliating, frustrating stories to get the point across. Yeah. And this, you know, just so you guys know, this could obviously, Bro, uh, I freaking nailed that intro. You did. Good job, man. Give some props right now. I'm proud of the props. man you're becoming. You got a little, put facial. it up, man. Let's get a little. <laughs> okay. Okay, bro. Anyways, everybody, if you're not watching the video, you should just tune in to the video. No, um, you know, this goes against the grain of what everybody talks about. And what we're going to tell you in this episode of the podcast, um, it could potentially hurt us revenue wise. Because we're going to tell you to do something that's in your best interest. Uh oh. Uh oh. Because we right, you can always tell happy and healthy. You can always tell when Chris says something that he thinks is profound because eyebrows go up. He just pauses. He's like, ooh. Ooh. I just surprised nice. myself on that one. <laughs> how did I get so smart? So here's how this Yeah, yeah, tell the story. No, go ahead. Tell here's the story. how this here's how this came up. Chris was in town last week. We had an event. It was awesome. Everybody made billions of dollars. <clears throat> not really. Caveat, not really. And Chris was over and I go upstairs because we're about to leave. And I'm like, you guys got everything you need. Like, let's get out of here. Chris is like stumbling around in the dark trying to get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, bro, I can't even close this door. And he's got one of the my doors, a brand new house. And he's like slamming against the wall over and over trying to shut the door. And I'm like, what's going on? And then there's like a massive crack above the door. Yeah. And the house is settled, basically. And Chris can't shut the door. And he's really, he's angry. And he's yelling things. Out. I was throwing and things against the wall. Missy wasn't there, so he had to dress himself and feed himself, and it was just a rough, it was a rough deal. And then you go downstairs, and there's also a big crack like down in the in the floor, and people are coming over like, "What in the world? Like, this house is is this on a fault line? Like, is your house going to split apart and fall apart before you?" I'm like, "No, no, no." <laughs> it's just 2012. And then I I did the unthinkable, and I Googled bad this is bad if you're sick don't ever google it <laughs> and if you have if you have big cracks in your house don't google that either because i'm basically convinced that our house is like missing part of the foundation and it's built on sand and it's about to fall over from this google experience i almost went to a hotel because i didn't want the, the house to fall on me while i was sleeping <laughs> so i called the builder i'm like you guys built this house on quicksand what are you doing that was scary. not really there they're coming over and the builder's like, you know, it's going to be fine. It's just normal settling. And I'm freaking out. This is my first house ever. We built it. And so I was telling Chris before this podcast, I've got a third party, a structural engineer coming over. And he's going to crawl around through the crawl space because I want a third party. I want to vet the opinion of the builder. And Chris, you were like, ooh, that's an amazing topic. And it applies to business because most people's opinions are biased and self-inflating. Yep. 
yeah, and absolutely. how important it is to get third party opinions from reputable sources, people that you trust. And that's why we encourage people to vet us and yep. they'll just hop on and become a client like the day after you meet us. I mean, you can, we're not going to, if we can actually help you, we'll, you know, we'll take you, but I actually encourage people and you encourage people to get multiple opinions yep. and be like, Hey, what do you think about these guys traffic and funnels and have, if you ever find yourself being pushed to not get another opinion, you're probably dealing with somebody who's a little slimy, a little shadester, a little shadester, freaking terrorist. Yeah, and, and talk to people who I would say two things. One, talk to our competitors, see what they have to say about us. Right. They're see what they have us. To <laughs> yeah. They're going to love us. See what they have to offer, but also talk to people who maybe have been where you are, right? Like they've, they've discovered this process or maybe they've been a client. They've gone through the process and ask them, right? They don't have, it benefits them. Um, not at all, whether you decide to become a client or not. And so they don't really have, most likely don't have a bias in whatever decision you decide to make, whether it's a yes or a no. Um, and this goes for like anything that's a major decision that you're making, right? Obviously don't overthink it if it's something that's small and inconsequential. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is, you know, in this case, this, this house is quite expensive. And so I'm gonna be getting multiple opinions I think that sometimes we do tend to inflate the importance of a decision when it's like, we just need to make a freaking decision. Yeah. So sometimes like you don't need to be getting, <laughs> what was it like this guy posted in our group? He's like, Hey, I'm thinking about trying to listen to the smartest guys in marketing podcasts. But before I waste my time, I just want to get some third party insights on the podcast. And he was kidding. Like, and it was hilarious. But some people well, no, do it on someone, the memos. Someone, yeah. Someone actually commented about the memos. Like, the seven dollar yeah. memos. It's like, bro, you don't need to do hardly any due diligence on that. Like it's seven. Like bucks. you're wasting everybody's time right now. But we do have people come in and for our higher level programs, they want to know. Like they want to talk to people. And that's why we we even include in some of our trainings, we'll get real clients on. And what what's one of the questions that we ask them? What did you not like about the process? Yeah. Legit. We want them to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And people on the last one, you know, there are a couple things that people didn't like. And then they ended up working through it and it was fine. But I think it's important for our job is to aid you and help you do diligence or do your due diligence. Yep. And you got to be really careful if someone's not attempting to help you do that for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You want to make sure that you are making an educated decision and that you're hedging your bets. And so with Taylor going out and hiring this third party person, um, he's hedging his bets, right? Because the guy who built the house is obviously going to have some bias. He built the house, right? There's things like if there is a major issue, um, if that gets out, that could negatively affect his name, right? There's a lot of things that could happen. But by being smart and bringing in a third party to, to look at the whole scenario, look at the whole situation, examine the foundation, examine the walls, examine the door that doesn't shut, right? All these things and give an unbiased opinion and feedback. And here's the thing that's important to note. This guy is an expert in that field. Yes. He's an expert in that field. So don't go to somebody who doesn't invest in their business. Yes. That's an investment that you're making in your business. That makes no sense. Right, because they've had, they haven't had to go through the, the decision making process and and realize if is or find out if this is a good thing to do or not. Like they've never played at that level. So um, only seek the the advice and wisdom of people who have already taken those actions or have you know they're an expert in that that arena. Bro, can I just add a a lesson one point one, an addition that you just yeah. gave me? Yeah. You said that, oh, this is so good. You guys just need to pull over, take a break for a second. If you're at the gym, just put the weight down, okay, because you're about to drop it by what I'm Don't about to yourself. tell you. You said that if the information got out about the builder, it could hurt his name. When you make a mistake, the biggest threat to your reputation is covering that mistake up. Mm. Super counterintuitive here because – you know, when, when people make mistakes, we, we work with a ton of people. We invest in 
and contractors for our business. We have consultants and coaches and mentors and masterminds. And that's just in the business. You go into our life and we are always paying people to do stuff. And when someone makes a mistake, when they say, you know what, here's the mistake, I'm going to fix it for free. I'm going to take care of it. I don't want to ruin them. (laughs) I want to protect them at that point. And I'm calling people and I'm saying, hey, this person, you can actually trust them. If they make a mistake, they're going to fix it. And what I see and what I've observed is that people are so freaking obsessed with their own stuff Mm. that when they do make a mistake, they make it worse and they compound it by trying to cover it up. I'll tell you what, when someone Mm. makes a mistake and they don't admit it and they don't fix it and they try to cover it up, I want to ruin them in their entire future. (laughs) Just being honest. Like, I'll take you to the bank. I want news reporters at my house. I want this put in every magazine. I'm going to run Facebook traffic to a VSL about how you suck. Like, not really. But you know what I'm saying? Like, when we make mistakes, I feel like we are 100% like, let's fix it. Let's make it right. Let's make sure that you're taken care of personally. Because if not, and that gets out, that's one of those things. It's like, it could destroy a company. Yeah, dude, you know, this This goes back to uh, even my house where the guy who did my rehab. Uh, correction, mansion. The guy who did my rehab, he's known in this area for being more expensive than anybody else. And I hired him because I felt comfortable in the fact that if you guys have dealt anything with construction or building houses or rehabs, you know, there's a lot of shady characters. Mm-hmm. A lot of shady characters. Well, you know why? So Not with this guy, I, I felt that if I hired him, you know, I'd be taken care of. And at the end of the day, if anything happens, which was, you know, was that, that scenario is, a, is like a high chance of possibility that something's going to go wrong. And yeah. lo and behold, it did. Right. Something went wrong. Um, they didn't measure my, my uh, crown molding correctly to the cabinets that were coming in. And so what happened is he had to eat it. He came in and said, no, this is wrong. This is, the, this is an issue. This is a problem. Like we have to deal with this. And so him being an expert and being a true professional, he just ate it and he fixed it. And, you know, he, he could have covered it up. You know, he could have covered it up and taken the money and, and profited. But now everybody that comes to my house, I tell them that story. And so something that could have been awful as a problem now is like marketing for him. Yeah. Right. I'm like, this dude is amazing. He's honest. He, he went the next extra mile. He took care of us. And so what's happening now is something that was a problem. That was an issue that could have been awful. Now is like used from the, the consumer, from the client as a way to promote and show like, this is opposite of what most people do. Yeah. And so even in looking in your business and in our business, we always want to shine the light on things that don't work so that we can fix them and make it better for the next person that comes down the road. And um, I think you need to be willing to go deep into the people that you're talking to and whether you're looking at hiring somebody or if you're on this side of the line and somebody's hiring you, right? Yeah. Always be willing to uncover the problems and vet every part of that process. Interestingly enough, he was quite a bit more expensive as well. And I remember we were talking about that because you and, you and the wife were having that conversation. You were like, I'm just going to, I want to spend, I'm going to spend more for that peace of mind and that protection. Yeah. A lot of times what we'll find is people will do what we're saying and they will vet us and they will have conversations with other people. Um, and then they'll go with someone else because they're cheaper. It's like, you know what? It's fine. But at the end of the day, the people who are more expensive in nine out of 10 cases, they're more expensive for a real good reason. Yeah. You know, and, and this is the problem I have with high ticket people. It was like, you can't just raise your prices just because you want to be high ticket and do the mm-hmm. same thing that you were doing for 29 bucks for 90, 9,800. Yeah. There's got to be depth to the decision to raise your prices. There's got to be, whether it's on fulfillment or anything, you know, people don't know how much we invest in our team. But if you look at our profit margins compared to other people in our field, like ours are healthy but we invest so much money in our team to make sure that bar none, we have the best case studies coming out. We have the highest percentage of success. 
all of those things are not by accident. It's not because we have cool hair or talk cool. It's, it's not, it, even though people think it is. <laughs> yeah. It's, be, it's because we've invested to the extent where, you know, when, when we are more expensive than someone else, it's because we can go the distance where other people cannot. You know what yeah. I mean? And Absolutely. I just thought, interesting point about how you chose to pay more money for this guy and paid off in the end. Absolutely paid off. I would do it again. Your and we kitchen will. is literally like, I can't wait to see it. I still haven't seen it, but it's, it reminds me of like, like Donald Trump's kitchen. <laughs> oh my God. You got the gold. You have similar tastes. You and you and the Trump. No, dude, his taste is just gaudy. <laughs> We're working on getting a plane. That's it. That's all we got. Cool. Anything, any announcements? Um, no announcements. Just get on the memos. If you're not, we're, we're changing the pricing structure pretty soon. So you better jump on it. And it's, it's a possibility that if you go to traffic funnels.com slash memos, that it's going to be different. So you better get yeah. on it now get on a good all right guys see you next time